choices, the production of First Assembly of God, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville. We are so happy that you've joined us and we want to encourage you, since Choices is about families, to gather your family together and view the program as a family. The panelists continue the discussion looking at the significance of priorities and so we encourage you to stay tuned and be blessed. We thank God for all of your viewers who normally take time out every week to view us. We pray as we speak from the Word of God, you will allow the Spirit of God to minister to you whatever you're going through. Seek the help of God and He will come near for you, to you. Invite a friend. Let him or her know that Choices is on. Stay tuned. God bless you. It is of paramount importance to have God as your number one priority. If you're going to live a successful and victorious life. When you put God first in your order of activities, you will avoid lots of pain and suffering. We've already seen in the case of Israel, a journey that should have taken 11 days lasted 40 years because they refused to make God the number one priority. Sir, Madam, the crux of the matter is when you put God first, all the other things that you desire will fall into place. You know, as your soul prosper, you, you will too. And so this evening we want to continue to discuss the topic, the significance of having your priority in order, gentlemen. The word of God is clear in Deuteronomy chapter 1, reading from verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. On this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Topel and Laban. They are eleven days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. This is the word of God and we are guided by the word of God as we deal with priority today. I want to share this quick with, uh, with us. My life was wayward, reckless. I didn't understand the priority. But after I received the greatest gift that any man on earth could receive, and that is salvation, I had to reorder my life. I had to now sit down and put my priorities in order. And my, my, priori my priorities are this. Number one is God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Secondly, the family, the first institution that God set up, not the state, not the church, God, family, and third, the church. And I realized that putting my priorities in order, I was able to see progress in my life, upward mobility. And I trust God, as you look at this program, as you view this program, that you will put your priorities in order and you will enjoy the benefits. You will see the blessings that will follow when you have your priorities in order. You know, when we talk about God, we're really talking about values. We're talking about uh, a set of principles that we can draw from and draw out of our relationship with the Creator, not just of the world, but of our souls and our spirits. And we talk about the parameter within which he is, uh, he is established all over the world for us to live and to operate therein. And every time we violate those, the parameters he has established, there are consequences. So we, we look as a people. Last week you heard one, a member of the panel, talk about his own life. And, um, the set of decisions he made and the kinds of consequences he reaped. You just heard another member talk about his life. Um, when people become conscious of who they are, whether they be male or female or whoever you are, you become conscious of your life. You understand, you begin to evaluate your life now against some kind of principle. Like if you want to determine the measurement um, 
of a podium or any structure, you use the standard measurement, the rule to determine um, Amen. The, the, the distance. Right. And based on that standard, standard. you're able to say, and nobody questions this, you're able to say, this is 13 inches. And that's it. There is a standard in the spiritual, moral, uh, social world. But mankind, we have drifted away from this standard so much. We have placed significant um, emphasis on the political and on the economic. And we, we de-emphasize or we ignore the spiritual, saying that that's for the weak ones, you know. And uh, to our own detriment when we do that. And, we, you know, we become concerned. The same people who ignore the importance of the spiritual, we now become concerned about violence against women. How is this thing happening? Domestic violence. Now, we all know that's wrong. But the only reason we, or the only way we'll be able to correct those things is there must be a place for us to teach these principles in every every sphere and be able to uh, uh, share these principles. And even without having uh, the, the groups who are teaching these principles should be able to do that even on the state television without having to pay for it because you are assisting. It's a very important structure you're providing for the development of the whole country, development of, of the whole mass, the whole society. It bothers me as an individual when I see young people taking their own lives, hanging themselves as a result of a bad decision they might have made. And therefore they've lost face in the community and therefore they can't live anymore so they, they believe that they, they have to do that. It, it bothers me. There's a, there's a better way. It bothers me also when two friends have a conflict or have some challenge in their relationship and the end result is one more is another one. I, I don't understand those things. Um, we have to find a way to be able to resolve these issues and this is, it's, we have to find a way to be able to have these conversations, these talking points. Listen, and that's what we try to do, you know. Every time we make a decision, you exercise a choice. Don't just think about the choice. Think about what might happen afterwards. It is so true because I, I, I think lots of times we get fascinated over the decision making process and the ability to make the decision and failing to recognize that there is the responsibility, the concomitant responsibility that goes along with it. And so it is not just making decisions, it is being responsible for the decisions that you and I make. And so we must teach that level of responsibility. We must cultivate in our, our, our youths, our children, and even among ourselves as adults, that uh, atmosphere of responsibility. And in doing so, the concept of um, establishing what is priority and what is not is all in this whole process of developing a sense of responsibility. And I think that is what we are trying to do. But even in teaching, sometimes you might convey the wrong message. Because I, I grew up hearing that the boy who hit the girl is a coward. But I also grew up hearing that woman's strength there, as she mouth and man's strength there, he had. So right there, that can send a sub, subliminal message that it is right that when she's going to win the battle by talking, 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 put a lash punch in. And that is wrong. And this is where we have to start to teach ourselves and cultivate the values and the principles from the Word of God and from uh, sound men in the society who can really teach us how to appreciate our women and, and not do acts of the domestic violence. And when we're talking about domestic violence, it is prevalent that it's the men who take advantage more often 
than the women hitting the men. So I would like you to take a stock. Listen to me. You might have hit a woman sometime in your life. That's the last time you must do such a thing. They are absolute, uh, it is an absolute disregard and it's a painful thing and it is even causing us to be recognized in a negative way. In the Caribbean it says that we have the highest rates of domestic violence and that's not good to us. So I would like you to take a stock of yourself and make it your duty. Listen, we can rewrite some of these very proverbs or these cultural proverbs that they, that they taught us. So why not the strength of the man can come in his mouth? I'm not saying put the strength of the woman in the hand, in the hand. but both, you know, both of you can have the strength to communicate and discuss issues instead of jump into violence. The strength, I would suggest that the strength of the man should be in his resolve. Yes. <laughs> and yes. in his in his, in his spirit to yes. be able to weigh matters. Yes. And um, rather than the strength of the man. I mean that's a powerful proverb, mm -hmm. the strength of the man being in his hand. The strength of the man being in his resolve, in his wisdom, yes. in his understanding. So notwithstanding the the, the the constant barrage of 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 verbiage, what a whole set of words coming at him, the man would be able to resolve, you know, I am going to be, you know, leave that alone. I'm going to ignore that. So his his strength is not in his hand, but in his ability to um, to move between understanding and wisdom, yeah. which is available. You know, that's not simply recognizing what is being said and making a decision as to how you would treat with what is being said. Because if you retaliate, that brings about you add to the figure of abuse. If you control yourself, and learning how to control yourself is so important, because self-control cannot be taught by anybody else. You have to learn to control yourself. And that is what brings you back to the place where you would choose to make the decision and not have it pressed upon you because of reaction. I can't have war in my house, you know. The, we may have misunderstanding. We may have different positions. But if, as a man, I, I, I see all misunderstandings as a, as a battle and a, and a battlefield, then somebody has to win. And if somebody wins, somebody will have to lose. In that atmosphere, you will tear down everything. You, when you finish, there's nothing left because you are fighting to win. That's why I support and I strongly agree with, 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 with my bishop and pastor of the strength of the man being in his resolve, being in a position to think, to analyze, and to make critical decisions. And sometimes the best thing to do is shut up. Sometimes the best thing to do is to hear and still don't hear. Sometimes the best thing to do is just walk away because it's just the responsible thing to do. And I believe God has a better plan for us than going in that direction.